Though Numenor was lost, Middle-earth was largely unaffected by the reshaping, but it was now populated by faithful Dúnedain refugees who fled Numenor before the fall to found the southern realm of Gondor, including Minas Anor, later called Minas Tirith, Osgiliath, Minas Ithil, Dol Amroth, and Pelargir, as well as the northern realm Arnor, divided into the regions Arthedain, Rudaur, and Cardolan, ruled from Anuminas until the capital was moved to Fornost. After the fall of Numenor, Sauron returned to Mordor and continued his plans for conquest, leading to the War of the Last Alliance, where humans, elves, and dwarves won the Battle of Dagorlad and Siege of Barad-dûr, leading High King Gil-galad of Lindon and High King Elendil of Gondor and Arnor to fight Sauron in personal combat, ending with all three killed. Isildur, son of Elendil, then took the One Ring of Power but refused to destroy it, allowing the spirit of Sauron to endure and slowly restore his strength. Other notable Middle-earth locations throughout the Second Age included the rivers Baranduin, Guathlo, and Anduin, the elven port city Edelond within the realm of Gondor, the Numenorean lumber camp at Tharbad, Lake Nenuiel ruled for a time by Galadriel, a descendant of Finwë, and the Sindar prince Celeborn, as well as the lands of the diminutive Druidine, an offshoot of men allowed to settle in Numenor after the First Age, but who eventually left as they foresaw a great doom approaching. They then settled the White Mountains, but were chased away by tall men from the east, leaving them to settle the Druidan Forest and Druwaith Eaur. Thus began the Third Age of Middle-earth, with the seven dwarf clans continuing to live in the red, misty, and blue mountains, though these years also saw them afflicted by a number of wars and tragedies, including dragon attacks from the northern waste and a terrible war to wipe out the orcs of the Misty Mountains after the murder of the Longbeard King. The Longbeards of Khazad-dûm, also known as Durin's Folk, suffered many such disasters in the Third Age, including the waking of a Balrog, which caused them to flee their home, renamed Moria, to settle other regions like the Blue Mountains, Grey Mountains, Erebor, the Iron Hills, and the White Mountains to the south. The Avari Elves, meanwhile, lived in the lands of the east, while the remaining Eldar populated Lindon and the Grey Havens under Lord Círdan, Rivendell under Elrond, Karas Galadon, in Lothlorien under Galadriel and Celeborn, who took over after King Amroth, son of Amdir, abdicated and went west, and finally the woodland realm under Thranduil, son of Orifer. Yet as the influence of the dwarves and elves waned, the realms of men rose to prominence, with the Dúnedain populating the kingdom of Arnor in Eriador and Gondor to the south, while the Dunlendings lived in Dunlin, Breland, and Kalinardon, and the Northmen, descended from the Middlemen, lived in Rovanion within the Greenwood, as well as Framsburg, Lake Town, and the City of Dale, though some eventually migrated south to Kalinardon, renamed it Rohan, established Edoras as their capital, and pushed out the Dunlandings, thereby creating eternal enemies. Another offshoot of men, the short peaceful Hobbit race, populated the Vales of Anduin, west of the Greenwood, before moving to live in isolation within the Shire. Consisting of the north, south, east, and west farthings, the Shire held the regions of Buckland, Tukland, the Brandywine River, and the towns of Bywater, Hobbiton, Mickledelving, and Tuckborough. Far to the east in the lands of Rune, numerous Easterling tribes rose and fell, like the wagon and chariot riding Wainriders, as well as the fearsome Balkoth, while further south, the Haradrim tribes were spread throughout far and near Harad, sometimes unifying and joining forces with nearby Umbar, populated by Black Numenorians, those Kingsmen colonists who survived the Second Age. To the southeast of Mordor, there were the lands of Khan, populated by the Variags who sometimes fought the Easterlings, yet peace was established when Sauron started regaining strength and spread his influence throughout the east and south, arranging for the Easterlings, Variags, Haradrim, and men of Ambar to put aside their differences and coordinate attacks against Gondor. In addition to regaining control over Mordor, Sauron took over Amon Lank in the Greenwood, driving the woodland realm north to establish Elven King's Hall as their new capital. Corrupting the area, his stronghold was known as Dol Guldur, and the forest became Mirkwood. Sauron's forces also held the Kingdom of Angmar in the north, under the Witch King of Angmar, leader of the Nazgul from his fortress of Karndum. Over centuries, the Witch King managed to destroy the Three Realms of Arnor, while also weakening the Elves of Lindon and Rivendell, though Angmar too was destroyed. The surviving Dúnedain of the north became deadly rangers hunting servants of the enemy throughout Eriador, protecting the Shire and Breland, which consisted of Bree, Staddle, Comb, and Arquette, populated by hobbits and Bremen, descended from Dunlendings. After the final defeat of Sauron and destruction of the One Ring in the War of the Ring, the Fourth Age began with the Realm of Arnor restored to create the reunited Kingdom of Gondor and Arnor, which over time subdued and made peace with the human slaves of Mordor, the Easterlings of Rune, the Men of Ambar, and tribes of Harad. Lothlorien was abandoned to form East Lorien, led by Celeborn, while Legolas, son of Thranduil, founded an elven realm in Ithilien. The dwarf Gimli started a dwarven colony in the glittering caves of the White Mountains, 
Kings, and eventually the entire Longbeard clan returned to Khazad Dun since the Balrog was killed during the war. Other notable Middle-earth locations throughout the Third and Fourth Ages included Fangorn Forest, populated by the tree-like Entrace and sentient tree Huorns, the Brownlands, once home to the Great Gardens of the Entwives before they were wiped out by Sauron, the Black Gate and Dead Marshes where many battles against Sauron were fought, Mount Gundabad, the revered dwarven region where the father of the Longbeard clan first awoke, which was then taken over by orcs, Mount Graham, from which the orc king Golfimbul attacked and was defeated by the hobbits of the Shire in the Battle of the Greenfield. Fields. Isengard and the Tower of Orthanc, where the wizard Saruman the White dwelt, the Gladden Fields, where Isildur was killed and the One Ring lost in the River Anduin for over 2,000 years, the Fortress of Helm's Deep, where the Rohirrim took shelter in times of crisis, and Bag End within the Shire, home to the Baggins family, made famous by Bilbo Baggins, who carried the One Ring, and Frodo Baggins, who destroyed the Ring in the fires of Mount Doom. Just outside the Shire were the Barrow Downs, haunted by evil spirits and Barrow Whites, as well as the Old Forest, where a mysterious, immortal man named Tom Bombadil lived with his wife Goldberry, a nature spirit and possible Maya. Tom was silly and friendly, but had no interest in the outside world, while holding seemingly limitless power within his home region. He may have been the oldest being alive, and was the only person to hold the One Ring of Power and be entirely unaffected. Though little is known about what went on in the later years of the Fourth Age and beyond, Prophecies claimed the world would end after Dagor Dagorath, a final battle in which Morgoth would return through the Door of Night to invade Arda. Yet in the end, he would be defeated, thus concluding the vision of Arda sang long ago in the Timeless Halls. What would happen after that, none could be certain, but one theory stated that the dwarves would help Eru and the Valar build a new world, populated by humans who were finally granted the unknown destiny promised through the gift of mortality. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Philbo the Farseer, Sir Loin, Werebear of the Great North, Sir Willem the Dontreader, and Thomas the Kinslayer. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.